that coming up as we begin midday in Kelloland. Live from Kelloland Media Group, midday in Kelloland. Another merger is in the works, this time involving Sanford Health and a Wisconsin-based health care system. Plus, experts say these scorching temperatures can affect your mood. I'm Danya Backus with how you can beat the stress or anxiety you may be feeling in the heat. Well, good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Tom Hanson. We'll also have an update on a major 911 outage. But first, our top story. It's been a challenging 24 hours at Durf Mike Durfee State Prison in southeastern South Dakota. Authorities confirm several people are hurt, including staff members, following fights. Kelland's Dan Santella joins us live in Springfield with the latest on the situation. Tom, you might be able to hear a siren going off right now behind me at the prison here in Springfield, South Dakota. We heard from DOC spokesperson Michael Winder this morning that inmates fought each other yesterday. There were six injured and six inmates suffering non-life-threatening injuries. Staff, some, quote, some staff also suffered some injuries, but they were not assaulted. What happened in the last few moments here was I was walking along this public road and the side of the public road on the west side of the prison talking to the prisoners on the other side of the multiple walls, the inmates talking to me. Some complaints about feeling disconnected and a lack of communication. They say they haven't had breakfast. They say they haven't had an ability to make calls. Additionally, they really stress they don't feel safe in there. I posted a couple of videos to social media, to X, formerly known as Twitter, and I asked a group just widely on my telephone, do you feel safe in there? And the answer was clear and resounding from the inmates, a big no. There have been yelling different things at us, sharing their perspectives. We're not hearing much from prison officials, just the very basics, that there was a fight, they say, the DOC says, amongst prisoners here at the Mike Durfee State Prison in Springfield, South Dakota. Six suffered non-life-threatening injuries. There was also staff injured. So we're talking with people out here, yelling in to the inmates, seeing what they've got to say and their perspectives that they're sharing with us. We'll keep gathering this info and we'll check in with you before too long. Reporting live in Springfield, Dan Centella, Dan's uh, Kelloland News. All right, thank you, Dan. We're also following a developing story involving Sanford Health. Just minutes ago, the health system announced a proposal to merge with Marshfield Clinic Health System. Now, much like Sanford, Marshfield has locations in many rural areas. The clinics are located in rural Wisconsin and Michigan's Upper Peninsula. In a news release, officials with the two nonprofit health systems say combining resources will benefit patients and expand research capabilities. The uh, news comes one year after Sanford ended talks with a Minnesota-based health system. Also new this midday, Hurricane Barrel may be connected to a 911 outage that affected cities all over South Dakota. Uh, Metro Communications Director says 911 services were out for about six hours in the Sioux Falls area last night. Mike Gramlich says service provider Lumen Technologies reported the outage was a result of damage to network infrastructure from the hurricane in Texas. People were able to text 911 and call the non-emergency line while that service was out. Turning now to a first look at your midday forecast with meteorologist Megan Chatta. And things starting to heat up, huh? We really are. Our temperatures right now in the low 80s. We're looking at some 90s before too long. Even some triple digits possible by the weekend. Right now in Sioux Falls, some sunshine, 80 degrees. But that sunshine is filtered due to thick wildfire smoke. And in Rapid City, you can see that haze over the Black Hills right now. 82 degrees with a light breeze. Some sunshine, but again, that smoke sitting in the air. It is 79 degrees in Yankton, 77 in Brookings, 82 in Sisseton, 86 in Buffalo, and 83 degrees in Pine Ridge. Our winds are very light right now from 5 to 10 miles an hour. We'll keep those winds light as we head through the rest of today, even into tonight and tomorrow. We have just a couple clouds popping up on satellite there by Watertown and over the Black Hills. Nothing is coming out of those clouds, not expecting anything for the rest of today. And like I've mentioned, that wildfire smoke does stick around as we head through the rest of your evening, even into tomorrow. Also tomorrow afternoon and evening, we're watching our risk of severe weather. A level one out of five there in green in western South Dakota. 
Hail and strong winds going to be our main threats. So for today, partly to mostly sunny skies, mostly light winds, 80s in eastern and central Kelowland, trying to reach the low 90s in western South Dakota. And then for tonight, clear skies will keep our winds mostly light, those low temperatures dropping into the 60s. Tomorrow is going to be a little bit warmer in western South Dakota, 90s, even trying to reach those triple digits with 80s in eastern Kelowland, all with sunshine and mostly light winds. We'll have even warmer temperatures with higher humidity as we head through your weekend. And we'll take a look at that with your seven day forecast in just a little bit. Thank you, Megan. Well, in Kelowland, we love our trees. If you have questions about trees and how to keep them healthy, SDSU professor John Ball is the man to ask. He is a forestry expert and he's helped South Dakota through the pine beetle infestation in the Black Hills and now he's helping cities navigate the infestation of the emerald ash borer. He is a state treasure. You know, his dedication, his work ethic, his brilliant knowledge of the topics that he, he's just, you, you, you follow him around and he just thoroughly knows the forest and horticulture and he's dedicated decades now to the state. I mean, it's crazy what he's given. In tonight's Eye on Kelloland, we get to know more about John Ball and why he travels the state helping people care for their trees. A pair of Sioux Falls restaurants are helping local farmers get back on their feet following last month's flooding. Sanaz Gourmet Mediterranean and Maury Steakhouse are hosting a special brunch this Sunday at Athan Railroad Center. 100% of the proceeds will be shared by a number of small farm families who lost crops due to the flooding. The owner of Sanaz hopes to raise $10,000. South Dakota has been more than kind and generous whenever I do fundraising for anybody on the moon. They respond. So now we have to help our neighbors. And you know, the way I grew up, if your neighbor in good shape, you are in good shape. Now the fundraising brunch features foods from Sanaz and Maury Steakhouse. It runs from 1030 until 2 Sunday. We'll tell you what's on the menu tonight on Kelloland News. In national news, President Biden has a full schedule today meeting with union leaders and hosting the NATO summit, all while questions surrounding his re-election bid persist within his own party. Last night, former President Trump returned to the campaign trail where he took advantage of the apparent discord amongst Democrats. Natalie Brand reports from Washington. President Biden meeting with union leaders in Washington Wednesday is trying to shore up the support of key groups that back his campaign as he tries to prove he's still up for the job. It's all about whether or not we're going to grow the economy, whether we're going to give working people a shot. This afternoon, the president welcomes NATO leaders during this critical week for his political future. Joe's own party now wants him to throw in the towel and surrender the presidency after a Single 90-minute performance. Former President Trump capitalized on President Biden's struggles post-debate as he returned to the campaign trail, joining him Florida Senator Marco Rubio, one of the names on his potential VP shortlist. I think they probably think I'm going to be announcing that Marco is going to be vice president. With polling that shows Trump ahead in key battleground states, Colorado Senator Michael Bennett went public with this warning. Donald Trump is on track, I think, to win this election uh, and maybe win it by a landslide and take with him the Senate and the House. Former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi was asked this morning if she wants President Biden to remain at the top of the ticket. It's up to the president to decide if he is going to run. Uh, we're all encouraging him uh, to, to make that decision uh, because time is running short. President Biden is set to hold a news conference Thursday, which many see as a major test. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Washington. Senator Richard Blumenthal of Connecticut added his voice Wednesday to Democratic lawmakers worried about Joe Biden's presidential run, telling reporters that he is deeply concerned about the president's re-election bid.